Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to what goes in to an inventory balance when you look at the inventory account on a company's balance sheet. Let's take a look. First off, the physical count. So obviously, um, whatever inventory you actually have that assuming you own it, um, that needs to go into your inventory account. Now, typically companies are going to physically count their inventory every so often. Um, in a periodic inventory system, this is a really big deal because in a, in a periodic inventory system, we aren't tracking how much inventory we're selling at any given point. And so the physical count is the only way to know how much inventory do you have on hand and therefore what is your cost of goods sold as well. Um, in a perpetual system, which does keep track of the inventory you're selling as you sell it, the physical count still serves an important purpose as, as basically a safety net. Your accounting system is going to say you have a certain amount of inventory, but you physically go out and count it to check whether or not that really is the case. Now, why might they differ? Well, maybe there was some theft, some waste, or other situations that you were unaware of that never did get captured by the accounting system. The physical count will help um, um, identify whether that has happened, and then you can adjust your inventory accordingly. Now, it's worth noting, when we say that we are doing a physical count of inventory, it is exactly what it sounds like. We are physically counting what is physically in our possession. So at the end of an accounting period, you're going to send workers out. If you're, say, a, a retailer or a merchandiser, you're going to have in, uh, uh, employees going out on the actual sales floors, counting what merchandise is on the sales floors. You have workers going and counting what's in the back rooms, what's in the storage rooms. You're going to have workers at the warehouses counting what's in the warehouses. You're going to be checking what's on the delivery trucks that you still own, so forth and so on. You're physically counting the goods that belong to you, regardless of whether they're at the warehouse, at the store, whatever the case may be. Because you're counting physical goods, you tend to do this during a slow inventory movement time or, if possible, after hours when stores are cut off from inventory moving in and out of them. So say like after hours at a retail business or maybe a warehouse doesn't bring trucks in and out between, I don't know, 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. So maybe during that time. Um, the reason for this is because you want the count to be as accurate as possible. And so the less movement there is of inventory from one place to another while you're trying to count, the more accurate your count will be. Now, as I said, this is a physical count. So we're physically counting number of goods but we're going to go enter those goods into our accounting system. Our accounting system is going to pair those physical counts with their respective prices, and that is going to give us the value of our ending inventory that we need to make sure we're reporting on our balance sheet. So that's the, the first step of figuring out what do you report on your balance sheet. There are a couple of um, um, extra things to consider or, or, or exceptions, I should say, to the physical count. The first of them being goods in transit. So there's two types of goods in transit. There are the goods that you have bought but not yet received. In other words, they're still on the truck, plane, boat, whatever method they're coming by. Or goods you've sold but not yet delivered. Again, still on the truck, plane, boat, whatever the case may be. Whether or not to count a good in transit in your inventory really depends on whether or not you own that good while it is on the truck. Okay, so whichever company owns the goods, something known as holding legal title, that's the company that is going to include the value of that inventory on their balance sheet. And there's two ways that legal title is determined. One is known as FOB shipping point. The other is known as FOB destination. FOB simply stands for free on board. And all it's telling you when it says shipping point or destination is it's telling you where did ownership change hands from seller to buyer. Did ownership change hands at the shipping point? In other words, as soon as the good went on to the delivery truck and the delivery truck started moving, the seller no longer owns it. The buyer owns it. right? Or did it change hands at the destination? The whole time the good is on the delivery truck, the seller still owns it, and it's not until that truck arrives at the destination, at the buyer's delivery point, that it becomes the buyer's good. So it's all about who owns it, which is just another way of saying who holds the legal title, and that is determined by whether or not 
you have terms in your contract that state that it was FOB shipping point or destination. All right, the other item to consider is what's called consigned goods. Consigned goods are when your goods that you sell and you own are held by another party who's assisting you with the sale. And it could go the other way too. It could be that you are assisting someone else with their goods, so you physically have them, but the other person still owns them, right? So it could go either direction. The most common example of this these days is Amazon, right? Amazon's a huge company. On Amazon, you have things that are sold and shipped by Amazon. You also have things, as you look in this example, that are sold by another company, but fulfilled by Amazon. In that situation, what's going on is this company has given Amazon possession of the good. The company still owns the good, the company has legal title, but Amazon has possession, and Amazon is assisting with the sale through their website. Right? Now, in that situation, because the company still owns the good, the company counts the good as part of their inventory. So legal title belongs to the owner. What makes consigned goods special is the owner is not usually the one who has physical possession. Right? So typically, these are not included in the inventory of the holder. So when Amazon goes and counts the warehouses, they cannot include whatever they count that they are fulfilling for someone else. They can't count that as their inventory. That belongs to another party. All right, that is it for establishing what goes into your inventory balance on the balance sheet. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you join me for another video.